Hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. I am coming live to you from my kitchen. Thank goodness you can only see a limited amount of it. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you how to take care of your Maker Studio stencils. It's not hard. I'm going to give you tips about a bunch of different things, what you should use, what you shouldn't use, how to clean them, how to dry them, how to always label them. Um, so I know there have been a lot of questions lately because I've been on this uh, on this uh, journey to fill up my blessing boxes with Maker Studio craft projects. So I've been using Maker Studio stencils a lot this week, and I know a lot of you guys had questions. So um, let me see if I can bring this down just a little bit. All right. Okay. Well. First thing I want to talk about is what you can use on your Maker Studio stencils. All right, they work great with any gel art ink. This stuff is awesome for anything that's porous and when you use it on fabric, you can heat set it and then it's washable. It's great, I use it all the time. Uh, the St Maker Studio stencils work with the ceramic paints even the new non-bake ones that Maker Studio has. They also work with their awesome chalk art. Okay, this color, what is this called? Pretty as a peach, it's a pretty color. So it works with gel ink, uh, ceramic paint, chalk art. You can use them with etching cream. Did you know that? This does not hurt them. Uh, okay, and here, I just had a glass of water. Here's an example of a glass that I etched with the all over cheetah pattern and etching cream. So this does not hurt them. You can even use the Maker Studio gilding size um, it's like a glue, but you can use this glue with the stencils and then uh, lift up the stencil and then when it's come to tack, which is, is usually 15 minutes roughly, then you can leaf your projects. So, those are some of the things that you can definitely use your Maker Studio um, products with, the stencils with. Uh, however, I do not recommend that you use craft paint, acrylic paint, or really even chalk paint. Whenever possible, don't use those things. And the reason why is because those things, those paints, um, dry really fast. And what they do is they clog the holes in your stencil, even the good paint. So if you are, I have some examples to show you. If you are going to, um, doing a project where you just for sure are going to be using either the Amy Howard paint or any kind of chalk paint, craft paint, acrylic paint from wherever. Here's what you need to know. You have to move as quick as possible. Seriously. Because you've got to get these puppies into the sink and sprayed out before it dries in the mesh. And let's see, when was it? It was... I don't know, it was about maybe 18 months ago, I went through this huge kick. I did a ton of live workshops here at my house where people came over and they created different Lazy Susans and food risers. And you guys, we used paint, okay? Which you can do, but this is what happened to my stencils. I think maybe you can see better if I hold it up. See, it just, it dries so fast, it gets in the mesh of your stencils. And once it's dry, it's pretty darn hard to get it out. That's one. Here's another one. And I could still use these stencils, probably, but, um, you know, this one's not as bad as the one before, except look up right here. It, so it just, it, 
paint is just not a friend of mesh adhesive stencils. So you're so much better off to use gel ink, chalk art, ceramic paint. When you're dealing with the Maker Studio stencils, I always recommend that you use the Maker Studio mediums to go with it. Okay, um, so now I want to talk about why am I sometimes not getting a crisp, clear stencil impression? And I hope this information is helpful to you guys. I see lots of you hopping on, and I see that you guys have given me stars. That's awesome. Hey, Rhonda. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Shirley. Hey, Suzanne. Hey, Crafty Graham and Myra and Beverly. Okay, so there's a couple reasons why you might not be getting a good impression. Why your stencil, once you do it and take the stencil off, why it might look a little fuzzy. The first reason, most likely, is because you've put too much medium on the top of the stencil. And it goes through the mesh, and then you keep applying more and more and more. It doesn't sit there, it starts to spread out. So, that's one thing. Don't use too much of your medium. The other common problem is that people keep going over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and that kind of leads to the same result of fuzzy lines because the, the excess of medium goes through the mesh and then it has nowhere to go because you keep applying more and so it kind of spreads out. Um, and then one other thing that I want to tell you, well, two other things. Uh, another thing is that you haven't got your stencil pushed down. They don't always have to stay sticky. Most of mine are not very sticky anymore, but they're still usable. But you just got to make sure you hold them still. Um, and that you're, you're not pushing your medium under the edge of the stencil. Okay, but, but one of the most, most common issues is with wood, either stained or painted or um, raw natural wood. The problem with wood is that it has pores, like our skin. It's kind of like what I have going on right here. You know how older ladies, sometimes their lipstick tends to go in those wrinkles and bleed out a little bit? Uh, I don't know if that's a good example, but this is what I think of. So wood has pores. And so when you apply that medium, a lot of times it goes into the pores and then it spreads out the pores. And so you need to stop that from happening. And there's two ways that you can stop that. One, you can spray any wood, painted wood, natural wood, stained wood project with a clear matte sealer before you stencil. That closes it down so it can't go into the pores and get spread out or you can use a clear wax, like a beeswax, a, a clear wax, like, um, you know, all those hardware stores have, Min Wax is the brand I was thinking of, but there's lots of different waxes that you can use. Uh, but those two things seal off the top of your wood and prevent things from going down into the pores and spreading out like lipstick does sometimes on older ladies and ladies like me. <laughs> okay, so then the next thing I want to talk to you about is what's the first thing that you need to do when you get your stencils? The first thing you need to do when you get your stencil is you need to label the back of it. Seriously. Because if you put this back on the wrong side of the backing sheet, it is hard to get it off. And it's hard to tell the difference between one side and the other. They're both kind of shiny. So the easiest thing is to just use a Sharpie and write what the stencil is. That helps also when it's time to put um, the stencils back on. And I want to give you this other tip that I just recently started doing. Where is it? Oh, it's right here. Um, when you have a bunch of stencils that are kind of similar in shape, it's good to cut your cut a little nick out of your stencil and the paper, the backing. Where is mine? Here. I'll show you. 
and then you know you know instantly how to put it back on oh and i want to show you a trick for getting the backing back on in a cinch um oh my gosh this changed everything for me okay so you want to label them and you can cut your stencils up you can use all of the stencil part of the stencil it's just completely up to you okay so uh, oh, and this one I did the same thing. I did another little nip right there. So I knew. And then, it, of course, it's labeled the back of it. Um, okay, so let's actually do a stencil. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Then I'm going to show you how we're going to wash it. I'm going to show you how we're going to dry it. And I'm going to show you how to put it back on the backing sheet. And I don't know, if you've been stenciling a long time, this is all old news to you, but maybe you'll get one tip. You know, I don't know. I hope it's helpful. If it is helpful, give me a this or a this. If I answer a question that you've maybe had for a while, let me know, okay? Because lots of you guys were asking for me to do this, and um, of course I'm happy to. Okay, this is just a, um, you know, a piece, a little piece of hard canvas. We're just using this just as something or an example to stencil on so that we can get our stencil dirty. So I'm gonna use this one. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear Psalm 118.6. And I'm gonna take it off the backing. Uh, these gray stencils do not need to be fuzzed. No fuzzing. Oh, thank you guys for the stars, wow. Yeah, do not fuzz these, okay? They're, um, they're perf the perfect stickiness, okay? And you're just gonna lay it on your project. And then you want to use your fingers to sort of rub it down, okay? If you guys take care of these, I, I mean, I have some that I've used 30 plus times. I have some, oh my gosh, I have some from almost three years ago that I still can use. Okay, so I've just put that on there. And then, where did it go? Oh, here it is. Okay, you're gonna wanna use one of these to apply most of the mediums on your Maker Studio stencils. This is a spreader, okay? If you forgot to order this, which that happens sometimes, then you can use an old gift card or an old credit card for a short time. It, it works, but this is so much better because you can make it absolutely whatever size you want. So when I get these, I just cut them up into a few different sizes, okay? And then I always take, do a little rounding on the corners and they're much easier to use. So can you see? Those corners are kind of rounded. All right, once these get really stained and yucky, throw them away. They're 50 cents for the whole thing, so most likely you can afford um, to buy a new one when yours is yucky. And I'm just gonna use this Hey Y'all Gel Art Ink on this to show you um, the cleaning process is the same no matter what one of the Maker Studio mediums you use, but I will say that the ceramic paint does have more of a tendency to stain the front of your stencil, which is no problem at all. It just makes them look not as pretty as when they were brand new, but they still work just fine. Okay, so I put some medium on my little spreader and I'm just gonna quickly push it through the holes on my stencil. And then I'm going to scrape the big globs off with just a smidge more. All right, and I'm looking, does it look like I covered it? Yeah. I did cover the whole thing and I went over it a few times to get the big globs off, but I'm not working, 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 working this, okay? And then when you take it off, okay, I didn't do a good job. 
it might have been this. I can't remember if I painted this or not. But anyways, the point is not this. The point is this. Okay, so now we have a dirty stencil. And um, if you're going to be doing a lot of stenciling, get a tub or a big baking dish or a big glass bowl and fill it with water and lay your stencils face down in the water so that the side with the, side with the stuff on it can be getting wet and getting washed off until you can go to the sink, okay? And then this is how I clean my stencils. So I'm gonna fiddle around with my phone for just a second to get an angle that you'll be able to see. This is hard, this part is hard to show. Okay, it's way at the bottom. Let's see, can I move any closer? I don't wanna tip my phone over. Okay, it's right here. Let's see if I move it. I'll move it back a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna use cool-ish water. It doesn't have to be super cold, but I wouldn't use hot water. And I'm just gonna turn on my sink, and then my sink has a sprayer. Okay, and I'll hold my stencil down with one finger, and I'm just gonna spray it off. Lift it up. Let me show you that one more time because I don't know if you could see. Um, let me go back and we'll do it in this sink instead. Although this is not the normal sink that I usually do my stencils in. Okay, let me see. Oh, is it going to tip over? my sink is not very clean. Oh well. So I would just lay my stencil face up in the sink and turn on the sprayer. I hold it down with one finger and I'm just going to spray all the stuff off the front and then I'm going to lift it up and see if there's any ink or chalk paste or ceramic paint or gilding size or etching cream on the back. And there you go. Now, if you have a stencil that is really got a bunch of gunk on it, you can take just a plain kitchen sponge and a little dab of dish soap, get it wet, and you can gently just use your sponge to go over the top of your stencil and then rinse it off. Don't do that on the back side, okay? So. Let me see. I need to dry my hands off and then I need to move you close again. And yes, I'm in bare feet right now. Okay, let's come back up here where you can see. Okay. Okay. So, our stencil is wet. What do you do with it now? Um, endless water. Okay. Uh, I usually lay it on the counter to dry if I have time, <laughs> if I'm patient. So I'll lay it with the sticky side up and I'll either lay it right on my granite or this is one of these dish drying mats from Dollar Tree. It was from last summer. You can get them all the time. They always have different prints and stuff on them. It's very low fiber, very low fiber. So I might lay it on my dish drying mat, sticky side up to dry. It takes a couple hours for it to dry that way. If I'm super impatient, which is true a lot of the time, I will take a low lint tea towel. Hey, and do you guys remember all the funny stories that I've told on my husband about how he's always cleaning the coffee maker with my tea towels? Well, here's proof positive of it. This is a tea towel I made with a Maker Studio stencil and it's got, it's just gunky. Um, but anyways, once it's really terrible, then I'll just toss it out and it gives me a reason to make some more. So if I'm super impatient, I just can't wait any longer to get the stencil dry so I can use it again. I will flip it over on my lint free my lint, low lint dish drying mat, and I'll take 
a, tea, a flour sack tea towel. These don't have a lot of lint in them. And I will just gently dry the front. Okay, can you guys see that? And then I'm gonna lift it up and I've got something on it. Oh, they're just strings from the edge of the stencil. And then it's dry. Okay, now, here's the secret. Let's flip it over to this so you can see. This needs to be washed. Okay, it is hard sometimes to get your stencils back on the backing sheet. Um, I'm gonna show you. Like, say you have a big stencil, and I know that this is the back, so I'm gonna be laying it on here, and I'm gonna be trying to get it on there perfectly, and it's hard. It is so much easier if you do it this way. Lay it sticky side up on the counter or on one of these dish drying mats. Check to see which side needs to go up. And then you just lay this on top of your stencil. Dun, da, da. It's so much easier, especially when you're dealing with bigger stencils. So that's what I like to do. Uh, okay. Um, I don't know. I don't think there's, I mean, stencils are awesome. <laughs> They're like my favorite crafting supply uh, because you can just do so much with them. And for me personally, um, I especially love the stencils from Maker Studio that have the Bible verses on them. I think it's so good to sprinkle things throughout your home, and to give gifts that have Bible verses. So um, that's why I love those so much. But if you take care of your stencils after it's dry, I save the little pouch that they come in. I'm just going to tuck these back in the little pouch. If you take care of them, clean them quickly, um, let them air dry, that's the best. Uh, put them back on the backing sheet and store them in the little pouch in a drawer or something, they will last you for a very long time. 25, 30, 35 times. I mean, possibly even longer. Oh my word, look how many stars! Wow, you guys are so generous. Oh my goodness. Um, so anyways, I hope I haven't completely bored you to death. The tips and tricks that I just shared with you are things that I have learned over the last three years that I've been using the Maker Studio adhesive mesh stencils. And I know, this is, okay, one more thing. Okay, so for all the moms out there, do you remember when the hospital <laughs> was sending you home with a newborn infant and you were like, ah! Really, you're gonna trust me with this newborn, um, super breakable baby, and you're like super cautious and scared? Well, that's how I felt, not to the same extreme, obviously, but when I was dealing with, when I was first using stencils, I was like, oh, they're so scary, oh, I'm gonna mess it up, you know? Oh. And now I'm just, completely comfortable with them. And with a little practice, you will get the same way too. So if you hopped on late, go back and watch from the beginning. I've just shared everything I know about working with the Maker Studio mesh stencils. No judgment on my dirty sink, please. And um, no, I have not ever used that other brand. I've never even seen any of their products. Honestly, Maker Studio has some great stencils. And they're, they're just easy to work with. So I think that you will definitely like them. If you have any questions, let me know in this video. Hey, Susie. If um, you have friends that are stenciling and they're having questions, or they're feeling like they're failing at it, that's the co most common thing. People will say, I'm a failure. I just can't stencil. I'm like, it's not hard, but you do have to practice. Did you get on a bicycle the very first time and ride around the block and then be able to apply your brakes and get off the bicycle? No. You got on your bicycle, you rode three or four pedals, then you crashed. <laughs>
And that's how it is with stencils. You just have to have a little practice and then you'll get the hang of it and you can get on that bicycle without even thinking what you're doing. I promise. Okie dokie. Well, um, feel free to ask questions. Feel free to sprinkle this video to your social media if you would like to. Um, and I hope you'll join me tomorrow for some more craft projects. We're going to be doing those baseball caps and you're not gonna believe how absolutely easy it is to do. I mean, seriously. And they look a lot like the ones that you can buy for $25, $30. Um, so that's one project we'll do. I don't, I'm not sure what else we'll do, but anyways, uh, if you haven't already liked and followed and turned on your notifications, Look for these three little dots up here and click them and then do whatever it says. I don't know, technology is not my strength. Um, but there are ways to turn on your notifications so that you'll be notified when I go live. And um, if you like and follow and you do a this or a this or say something, you're probably 10 times more likely to be served my content tomorrow and the next day and for Christ and Crafting on Sunday. And so I hope you will. All right, I'll quit talking. Have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you guys tomorrow.